How's it going, Short Kings? It's week 10, and we are on a roll. We're up against Florida International this week. Of course, Herb Street's going to say we're going to win, and of course, Florida International is ranked uh, higher than us in pretty much every category. They are 5-2, and two, with their two losses being to a number eight undefeated Western Kentucky in a pretty close game. And then against a five and two North Carolina where they kind of got blown out. But the rest of their wins, I mean, th those are some pretty solid results. But before we get into this game, we got to go through our recruiting a little bit. Only 800 points to put in so far this weekend. Right now, as it stands, Shane Anderson is the only player visiting. There are three more guys ready for visits, but we prefer to schedule them against Western Kentucky. That's a free 50 XP per player. So we'll send them all to that uh, that big home game late in the season. There's going to be a, a few players we're not going to be able to get any more. Either they're committing elsewhere or they're locking us out. We're going to go ahead and keep with the strategy that's been kind of working for us where we give... Uh, no points to the players that we are in the lead with, and then give the full 500 to some players that are pretty close behind. We're gonna go ahead, oh my gosh, look. <laughs> oh, look at all these running backs on the board. There's gonna be a lot of position changes uh, in the off season. Now we still have a lot of points we can give, so I'm going to go ahead and fill our board back up to 35. As we can see, only 42 guys available to look at. So we'll just do a, a quick little low lock cheese to find where we can grab some guys from. With our board filled back up, we're going to go ahead and scout these guys just to see uh, what they got going for us. Now that we have that uh, fully leveled out scouting, we can get 100% in one go. This guy's not too bad. Dwayne Rogers could be a nice pickup. Plus seven overall. Everybody who's not fully scouted will go ahead and just go through and see if we can find out you know, the full scale of what we're getting with these players. And now, since we're having a hard time getting guys to commit, we'll just offer scholarships to pretty much everybody for the rest of our points. See if we can't start getting a couple guys to commit. And just a reminder, if somebody shows this not applicable on your recruiting board, you don't want to put points into them because it'll just be a waste. That'll be our recruiting. Uh, a lot of players that we're in the lead with, but just... No commits yet, probably waiting for their visits. We're gonna go ahead and wear the white pants today, and as you can see, Florida International, 79 overall compared to our 72. Uh, it looks like they have the biggest edge in the offense, so it's gonna be up to our D to make a couple of stops, I think. So just Shane Anderson, the pretty solid three-star running back will be visiting. And we can see their top players hitting that 90. That's uh, gonna be tough. Hopefully, the fact that he's just a tight end won't mean will mean that we can just kind of survive. And oh, what the hell is going on here? What? Florida International. I don't know how they're five and two. Three quarterbacks injured. The Alexander brothers and McGo. A broken vertebrae out for the season. A foot fracture out for seven weeks and a strained Achilles is probable. Uh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Very unlucky. The mine is going to play a host to this one. And, you know, I think that the Dwarfs players are really thinking that they can win this one. You can see in the CUSA East standings, we're just below that ridiculous Western Kentucky team. And Flutter International is two behind us. So we're trying to stay undefeated in conference play. Here's a nice live look at the mine. Ooh, the home fans still showing out. Surprising amount of fans traveling up from Florida. And FIU is going to win the coin toss, which means we're going to start with the football. 
There is no wind on this uh, probably relatively cold May night. As Nunez bringing it out of the end zone. Oh, what am I doing? Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> that turned into a lot more than I expected. Predictably, we're going to open this one up with a run. And to leave Noel, that's a pretty solid four-yard carry to start things off. I'm not sure if it's our personnel or just me, but I've been thinking about... Oh, wow. Well, that was just personnel. I've been thinking about moving away from this run-and-shoot playbook. Going to something a little bit different. It certainly does not help when your quarterback's just going to miss a wide-open guy like that. Richie Kirk, can he scramble for this? He's got the edge. Oh, he took a shot. Absolutely leveled. It looks like he might be a little bit hurt after that one, but we got the first down. Oh, Richie. I should have slid down with him. Yep, Chip Reed loves in. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game. I mean, so there's four injured quarterbacks here in the mine right now. On second and seven, I got to try to remember that Chip might have a slightly better arm. So he just dots one to Noel there, but he's way slower. At the bottom of the screen, it just disappeared, but we got a maybe an upset in the works. Western Kentucky is tied up at eight apiece, and this might be picked. No, we got Norton there. He broke a tackle. Oh, AJ Norton. What a fantastic play. AJ does a good job adjusting to that one and then breaking the tackle. And, ooh, that's going to be a face mask. To leave Noel had a couple of yards, but they're going to give us a whole lot more. Inside the red zone in less than two minutes. You know, I thought after last game our sliders were in the right spot. Who knows? Either this Florida International team's not too hot or uh, we got to just continue to beef them up. First and goal is just like that. See if they can make a goal line stand. Tlaib Noel, ooh, took a shot. Wow. I don't know how he managed to fight back there for that second effort, but loses two yards, and they got through the line immediately. We might end up having to pass one. Donnell Irby comes in on second and goal. He's got the speed, but he's not very strong, and he'll lose two more. Third goal, Noel's back in. Looking for him on the pass. Oh, what a bad pass. Oh, we Seattled it. Oh, no. It's an interception just like that for old uh, Chip Breedlove. They got the ball. Uh, maybe we can get a safety. We're definitely bringing the blitz. This is, has to be a run up the middle. Let me get Hamilton up in the his business. We hit him before the line. He's still on his feet. And they lost a yard. They've got four tight ends in this formation. Again, it's going to be a run. The question is, can we stuff it? The answer is no. Oh, this could be big. Luckily, we are fast, but that was a big 34 yards. Couldn't contain the edge. One of these days, we'll have a safety. Today's not the day, it looks like, though. They're going to, oh, take a sack. He shrugged off the first guy, and then thankfully, Jimmy Gross was there to finish it off. Now, the quarterback that's playing right now is the least injured one, and unfortunately for us, he's the second stringer. So that means they're first in their third string quarterbacks are injured. This guy's not the greatest, but he does find a guy for two yards, third and 11. This is a huge chance for the defense to get off the field. I probably could have been covering that better, but we still get the tackle and bring up the fourth. Although I'm a little bit worried about them going for these now. They're just going to punt that one away. And, ooh, they almost got a lucky bounce. We'll get the touch back, and I'm definitely happy with that. Richie Kirk is checked back in. We're going to throw with his... Ooh, we were going to throw with his first play. Instead... <laughs> oh, I wanted to slide down there, but uh, we'll just take a hit for two yards. i got to stop being so nonchalant running my uh, my quarterback. Leave Noel, that's a great six-yard carry. Third and two, we're going to keep the ball on the ground. And Noel, nice carry again. Depending on the safety, what the safety does. Oh, gosh. We're going to take a sack, I guess. Uh, That's on me. That was bad all around. And it's also the end of the first quarter. Oh, of course, we get to see this highlight at the end. Man, he is a giant compared to Richie Kirk. That's got to be terrifying. Oh, gosh. Goodness, it's second and 20 to start the second quarter. We're going to try a little slip screen to leave Noel. He's actually got a blocker. This is going to work out well. 
third and manageable now. You better believe we're going to go to the slot outs and look for a running back again. The short yardage situation. It works out that time. No interception and we get across midfield. Now I'd like to keep running. I don't typically run draw plays because I don't think they work all that well. But we're going to try it here. Let's just ooh, make a little move. Bad cut from me. We lost all our momentum. But still eight yards on the draw play. Ooh, the box has been left wide open here. Try to run it. Noel's got some blocks. And there's another first down. And that was another face mask as well. Surprised the refs didn't call it. Maybe looking for Khalif James or AJ Norton. Ooh, I don't like either. We're going to just take off again. Oh, Richie. Ooh, I got a little scared there. I didn't think I slid in time. That's a nice carry for Noel. Almost another first down as we're getting close to the red zone again. Donnell Irby comes in. Irby does not get a whole lot of carries. At least not this year. In the future, we might see him some more. He does a good job getting five and a first down for us. First down. Ooh. I don't know how Noel snuck through there without getting tackled. The lineman over-pursued, and we got a first and goal. Let's see what Noel can do this time. Ooh, no blocking. <laughs> good job from the defense. This already feels a lot like last drive. We're going to try a toss play to Irby this time. Second and goal. He has the speed, but that block on the edge doesn't hold long enough. So now we've got a, so now we've got a pass on third down. And this is going to be a risky one. Oh, my gosh. Almost through the pick. I, I just can't throw today. We're going to settle for the field goal. And just take the points. Just some good red zone defense from Florida International. Let's hope our defense can come up again. We did a pretty dang solid job last time as well. Ooh, this could be a big return. Now past the 30. Probably expecting a run on first down. No, they're going to go back to pass. Quarterback's going to scramble, and we're going to hit him. Just uh, came up out of the zone to get that sack. Second and 11 now. See another pass. Try to watch my zone. They're going to go to the flat. Marks has an interception. This has to be his pick six. Inside the 10. Oh, too easy. What are they thinking throwing it out in the flat like that? Devin Marks, the strong safety. Gets the first touchdown of the game. Oh, he ball hawked that the whole way. Defensive touchdowns are going to be really helpful in this game. And that puts us to only like negative 10 in the turnover differential on the season. Evens us up for the game. With only a minute and 40 seconds left in this uh, half. Probably going to go to the air a lot. Gosh. Finally, he gets sacked. Second and 12. That's kind of on me. Oh, wow. We're going to get hit with a face mask. That face mask is going to put him at midfield. And I think if you're Florida International, you got to be looking for any points you can get. Clock's ticking. Second and two. Oh, nice out route. Job getting out of bounds to stop the clock as well. Ooh, I kind of got baited there. Hold him down inbounds. Took their second timeout, so they've got one left. And they're now inside the red zone. Clock stopped because of the chains, but it's going again now. They're going to try to probably save that timeout until they absolutely need it. And uh, thankfully, they've been allowing me just kind of to sit there as a QB spy. Second and six. They find a man inside the 10. Nice little catch. Quarterback definitely put that one behind him, and oh, he's injured. First and goal from the six. 25 seconds. I don't know why they're bothering putting a man in motion. And quarterback's going to take off. Can somebody get there? Oh, nobody reacts in time when he ran the opposite direction of me. So Christian Alexander gets in for the touchdown. That leaves us with 19 seconds and three timeouts to try and get something done here. Nine plays, 69 yards on that drive. We're really hoping that Nunez can give us something. I'm bringing this out. The home run play potential of Nunez is too good. And ooh, he throws everybody. Nunez, if there's no flags on the play, he's got just the kicker to beat. Let's make a little move. 
and he's in for the touchdown. Seven seconds left. Again, he breaks the NCAA record for the longest kick return in history at 106 yards that time. That's like the third or fourth time he's said it. Uh, he is, uh, I mean, if he doesn't win returner of the year, then the award is a sham. Beautiful cut there at the end, too. You know, occasionally it feels like we could just call upon those at will. And we're going to make sure that this one's returnable so that they're forced to burn some time off the clock. We don't want them to have too many shots downfield. And that'll leave them with just enough time for one Hail Mary. Well, it doesn't look like they're going to go for a Hail Mary. We might see a run and then a timeout here. Uh, clock's hit triple zeros. So they get nine yards, but we're going to go into the half with a 10-point lead. And if you're the Florida international coach, you have got to be devastated that your team gives up a special teams touchdown. Their defense has done everything. It's our special teams and our defense that are the reason we have the lead. I... Guess I forgot, they they kicked it off to us to start, so we'll give them the ball here. It's not as bad as I was expecting. But you have just gotta expect your, uh, your offense <laughs> and your special teams not to give up points. First and 10, they can go back to their normal offense. They're not time constrained, and that's a decent four yard carry. Second down. Oh, again, it's a mistake to run towards the edge against the Dwarves. We swarm him and they'll lose a couple of yards there. We should be able to expect a pass on third and eight. Could be a screen. And, ooh, I, honestly, I had three guys that I was kind of worried about there. So uh, I left the one right over the middle open. I got a first down easily. This quarterback has not had a ball hit the turf yet. 9 to 10 with an interception. They're going to hand it off for another four yard first down gain. Second and six. We're going to go with a screen, a quick little screen. We got him in a third down. But this is not going to be an easy stop. My first thought has to be another screen or maybe a run. They put it on the ground. They're going towards the edge. We strung him out, but just not enough. They get the first down. Really hoping we don't give up a touchdown here. I want to keep it a two-score game if possible. It's going to be another handoff, and ooh, I guess I forced him to the edge, and he only got two, so not the end of the world. It's going to be a pass here on second down, and oh, I guess he kind of, I don't know what happened there. He had two guys in the same spot, and neither one of them could come up with it. Another third and long. Quarterback's going to scramble. Caps has to hit him, and he does. They could go for it here, but it's fourth and two now. Oh, well, they're just asking for Nunez to return one. They are begging for a kick six. We're gonna bring back Frederick as an extra blocker, but you're gonna try a, almost a 60 yarder. Oh, he had the leg. Holy moly. He almost put that one through. And Western Kentucky survives the scare against Georgia State to stay undefeated. I did not expect that kick to be so close. And now we're just going to give it to Tlaib, and I guess we can almost start burning clock. Up 10. And we're nearing the end of the third. So, I mean, a few first downs. We could get this into fourth quarter, and, and things could be looking good. Trying the screen here. It's been working good to get us into those third manageables. On third and five, we'll go to the air. And, oh, I do not see anything. There's B, but I don't think I can make that throw. Instead, we'll just allow Richie to continue to run. Feels like a cop out when we scramble, but they had our receivers pretty well locked down. After already throwing one interception and, oh, being so close to throwing so many more. So Got to avoid this sack there. I'm honestly just a little bit worried about throwing right now. Hand that ball off. Oh, Tlaib actually again ran into my blockers, and now it'll be third and nine. Try to see if we can find somebody who's open. Is can we fit it in? Oh, Dane Upshot. We're not supposed to run forward. It's fourth and three now. We are gonna go for this. I'm looking at the counter. Uh, if Norton can hold this block, we we could get this. Fourth and three. There's the first block. Yeah, that's a first down. Nice job, Tlaib. Take a little shot here on first down. Oh, this is a risky throw, but we find A.J. Norton. Can he get in? 
big touchdown, extending the lead with only 31 seconds left in the third quarter. It's starting to look almost impossible for Florida International. We've seen that they can move the ball pretty quickly, but if they don't start to get it done on this drive, uh, I got to think it's game over for them. Yeah, it's just another solid return. This defense has given up less than 150 yards so far in the game. And on first down. Oh, that's me. Ooh, they're going to get a lot there. Stiff arm cheese, too, to get them across mid midfield. Well, 11 seconds left in the third. I think we're probably going to see this as the final play. Oh, if this is a modern-day NCAA game, I get called for targeting there. But we're going to go into the fourth quarter. Uh, with a very, very solid 17-point lead. Second and six. This wouldn't be a terrible time to run, but I'm expecting them to be in the air most of the time this quarter. And, ooh, he threw that one away. That's only his third incompletion of the day, and it brings up a third and long, or maybe third and medium. And, ooh, Marks knocked it loose. Big play to bring up the fourth and six. FIU has to go for it here. I think their game is on the line. If they can't convert here, we're going to be able to burn a lot of clock. And, oh, he dropped it. Oh, wow. My coverage was real soft. It hit him right in the midst, and that's the problem with throwing to your running back. He has got to be livid after that one. It would be foolish of me not to be running the football here. So we're just going to start burning some clock out, and... Hopefully we can score one more time. If FIU wants to get a stop, we're going to force them to make the move. Try to avoid making mistakes, and that was a weird cutback, but it works for nine yards and a first down. Just keep chugging along with the ball on the ground, and Noel, oh man. If he's going to pick up yards at a clip like this, he'll be well over 100 by the time the game ends. Second and inches, give it to him again, and just make a nice little cut. Just eating the yards right now maybe this is just some tactic to get the ball back by letting us score awfully quickly because Talib Noel seems unstoppable the biggest thing about this drive is okay, we're already below three minutes in the quarter and Noel how did he get that first down got hit behind the line of scrimmage and just kept driving the legs and uh, that might be the kill shot there's not a whole lot that these guys can do now to stop us. They're going to have to take their timeouts real soon. Or maybe they've just started to wave the white flag. They're stacking the box, but under two minutes to go. Even if we don't score here, it's not a huge deal. Noel gets another yard. And, you know, we're probably going to go for this on fourth down if Irby can't get in. Got another yard, so it's close. But we'll just try to punch it in here on fourth down and... If we don't get it, then they've got a long ways to go to try to continue to make it a game. And no, Noel got in easily. 36 seconds left on the clock. Even if he didn't get in, this game is over. Kickoff almost feels like a formality at this point. Uh, they'll probably get a decent return, but I mean, even if they score a touchdown, there's not a whole lot they can do. And gosh, just an, yeah, good returns. Our special teams has not been good on that end so far today. Well, we'll really know if they're waving the white flag if they come out and run it at all. We'll expect them to pass. We'll go to the air. Short pass to the running back. Maybe get his confidence up that he can catch the ball at the end of the game. But this one's essentially over. They did take a timeout there. Not really sure why. Maybe they're angry at us for scoring that last touchdown. And it's going to work out for them. They find the running back again. I think he got out of bounds too. They're definitely just playing for pride at this point. Big handoff and, oh, broke a tackle and then jumped over the guy. They'll take their second timeout. 15 seconds to go. If they run it here and then take a timeout, I'm going to call uh, BS. Or they'll probably go hurry up instead. They really want to score. Should be the last play of the game. It's a screen. I was way late to recognize. I have no idea what the hell was going on there. He's going to be hit as he throws it. Now there's a second left. On the final play of the game, they're going to go to the air. And pick up another first down. Good for them. But the clock will hit triple zeros. And 
I really did think that we had a, the sliders in a good spot. Maybe I played incredible. But that game was not close. 31-7. One recruited the game to impress, and we just obliterated the Golden Panthers. They're going to have a, a long trip back down to Florida. And, uh, you know, I might agree with this as being the play of the game. First touchdown scored, and it's a pick six. So the short time that Chip Breedlove was in, he had an incredible 242 passer rating because uh, he went 2-2 two two for 34 yards. <laughs> but Richie Kirk with the 130. 5-9 and nine for 65 yards, a touchdown, a pick, and just a hair over 50%. Noel with a nice 129 yards, 5.3 average, and a touchdown. And A.J. Norton, just again, you know, only two catches, but we just didn't throw a whole lot this game. Still gets 48 yards and a touchdown. On defense, three sacks, Frank Benjamin, Brock Ferris, and Jimmy Gross, so the linebackers kind of getting it done there. And then Devin Marks, the strong safety with that pick six absolutely huge as a team less than 250 yards of total offense they were less than 225 neither team great on third downs and we end up tied in the turnover battle because of all the kick return yards there's only a difference of two yards between us for the total and of course we slaughtered them in time of possession the only two games around the country that i guess the game finds notable to show us are unlv slapping around san jose state and then a number 15, Arizona, losing to Cal in double overtime. Noel and Marks are our players of the game. Kind of makes sense. The two guys with, uh, you know, two of the interceptions. And as we advance the week, we're going to lose a lot more players. This is that Kansas, Rutgers, Louisiana, and Oregon State will steal some guys away from us. Because we continue to set this NCAA record, we're getting a lot of free XP. So thank you, uh, Nunez. We move now to 7-1 on the season, and we get a 3-5 uh, Florida Atlantic on the road next week. But that's going to have to wait for the next episode. Taking a quick look at the BCS poll, Tennessee and Iowa are right now slated to be in the national championship. Clemson got jumped because of the bye, but they have two games fewer played than Iowa. Oklahoma and Houston round out the top five with uh, Western Kentucky jumping up to sixth. Uh, when we inevitably have to play them, if we can win, that might catapult us way up into the rankings. And back in the media poll, if we look at the additional votes, still getting no respect. Having to climb from, I guess, last place. They, they see the seven and one as a fluke. And they might be right. As we look at some awards semifinals, we got a couple of guys for the Ben Rick. Also for the Nagurski, the Lombardi, the best linebacker, the Groza, and of course, the best returner, G. Nunez. Let, let's just, this is going to be, the I think, the most impressive comparison. If we take a look at Jarrett Burgess, who's currently sitting at number two uh, on the award shortlist, he's got 720 kick return yards in one touchdown and then 340 punt return yards. If we look at Nunez, it's close to 1,200 retur kick return yards, three touchdowns, and then 344 punt return yards and a touchdown. So four times the touchdowns and closing in on twice as many kick return yards. And it's not like he's had that many returns, only 29 and only 13 punts returned. Yeah, Gene Nunez is just an abomination for how good he is. But that's going to do it for us for this episode. Of course, we'll take a quick little sneak peek. And of course, Herb Street has us winning. And then, <laughs> as usual, uh, Florida Atlantic outranks us in a bunch of categories, including the overall. They're a B-minus team. They're going to be pretty solid. But we'll save the trip for Boca Raton for next episode. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching, if you're still around at this point. If you want to see more episode of the Dwarves, feel free to subscribe. And, you know, I can't really say to go watch us on Twitch to see the opposite where there were Western Arizona because that series is about to wrap up. But if you want to see us bring, I believe, UTEP back into national relevance, I should I don't know why I'm saying back because I don't know if they've ever been nationally relevant. But if you want to see us make them nationally relevant, head on over to twitch.tv slash poonmaster69 where, who knows, we might be live right now. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video, but anyways, you guys are the short kings. I'm Poonmaster, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.